Hey folks, I'm back again. Today we're going to set up a terrarium. Now, the setup for this won't be, uh, uh, probably won't be a, a typical setup. What I'm actually going to do is transfer uh, stuff from this aquarium or terrarium over here to this terrarium. Uh, I got this at PetSmart. This is the PetSmart brand. They call it uh, uh, the Thrive. And um, a lot of these, like especially the hexagon tank, got pretty crappy reviews. Uh, I'm hoping that this that this will do uh, okay for my needs. It was definitely the best priced uh, of the large larger terrariums, and uh, it was on sale. I got this for about $180, um, which seems a little bit much. I didn't need all the stuff inside of it. I, I, I much I wish there had been like an option for one an empty one of these for maybe $150 or something like that, but. That's not the case. As we uh, dispose with some of the, the packing material here, you can see that it is a kit. It's gonna come with some stretchy vines. Uh, it's gonna come with a suction cup feeder dish. It's got two domes uh, and two bulbs. So one of these bulbs would be like a heat bulb and the other one is a UVB bulb. Uh, there's the bulbs right here. It also has a thermometer and a a uh, hygrom hy hydrometer. <laughs> it's also got a little cling wrap background that you can put on. I'm not sure if I'll do that or not. I might actually do that. Uh, we'll see. And it comes with some uh, coconut fiber that you can break up and uh, and use as a substrate. Of course, I'll be adding my own substrate or doing something a little bit different with that. The enclosure itself is uh, 18 by 18 by 24. Uh, what I want to put in here is a crested gecko. Uh, there's kind of an interesting story that goes with the crested gecko, and uh, maybe I'll get into that later. But because it's a crested gecko, I definitely wanted to get one of the taller uh, versions of one of these aquariums. And uh, I, I still wanted a lot of space and stuff. I might even uh, opt out of using these lights and use the original light that I put into this thing. Um, I'm not positive yet. I'm going to wait and see how it looks or how it fits. This uh, kind of closely resembles uh, the dimensions for this, but I think that this is going to be a lot, um, it'll be a lot more interesting to look at from a, a lot of different angles. Uh, this, uh, the vision cage is pretty neat, but it is sort of limited to that one angle. And they're really kind of meant to put in a shelf or something. Uh, the vision cage might come back at some point, but um, I think for now, I'm going to put that aside and uh, take transfer everything that was in there and here and do something that kind of matches the aquariums with the, the glass all the way around and, uh, and just try something else. All right, let's see what we can pull out of here. How is this attached? Uh, just some double sticky tape. So we got a heat bulb. I don't think I'm gonna need that. It's, I guess it's handy to have it in case I did we got really cold in here or something. We have a UVB bulb. Again, uh, the Cresties don't really need that. At least that's the, the thought. I suppose there could be some debate about that, but I haven't I haven't heard anything in a while. <laughs> and this is the cling wrap background. We'll we'll whip this out and see what it looks like here in a little bit. A really big conspicuous thermometer uh, humidifier. Let's we'll see. Let's see what that is. So this is sort of interesting. It's it's a little it's made of foam, and uh, it's got a it's got a suction cup here with one of these little cranks inside of it. So maybe it works a little bit better. I was thinking suction cup doesn't seem like it would work too well, but. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll put it, we'll give it a try and see how it does anyway. Here we have some coconut fiber, and this is something that you would use to, uh, you'd break this up and use it in the substrate. Always handy to have some of this. I actually have all the substrate stuff I need already. Uh, we have these vines. This is meant to look like pothos. I have actual pothos to put in there, but it's got sort of a, like a little rubberized hose or something. 
And uh, if you didn't have plants or if you're not planning on growing plants, I do recommend just growing plants in your terrarium. But um, if you didn't have some already, I guess you could use that. I won't be using it. And we've got two of these lamps. These are uh, like the deep deep dome lamps, I think is what they call them. Yeah, 5.5 5 .5 deep dome lamps. Uh, pretty... Pretty nice, uh, definitely heat resistant and stuff, which is good for, for lizard stuff. They do include a little handle that you can attach to the top of this if you'd like to hang it or something like that. And there's actually two of them. Let's see if there's... Here's the second one, again, exact same thing. Yeah, so taped to the back, we have this uh, care tips and special savings. Oh, so here's the coupons. Free 12 count of crickets, 50% off, uh, 50 count of mealworms, 20% off any Thrive freeze-dried food, 20% off any Thrive decor item, 20% off any Thrive light bulb, 20% off any Thrive substrate. So there's some uh, there's some little discounts for you. And right here we have some directions. Tank looks good. It appears to be sealed uh, sealed up to this point. Hopefully it holds water and stuff. I'll probably do a little water test and make sure this bottom part holds water. Uh, the reason that's important is I'm running, uh, I'm going to be running a sprinkler system in here. So I'll be piping those in. It does have a spot at the top that you can run cords through, uh, especially made to run the cords through. And uh, I'll be running the sprinkler through there as well. It's got a mesh top. It's got a mesh uh, right up here. So there's plenty of air uh, or places for air to kind of pass through. That can make it tough to keep the humidity in if you, uh, if you don't have little little sprinklers or misters going. I'm excited. I think it's going to be a fun project and uh, I'll be working on this probably all weekend. All right, let's get this thing set up. So here is the current setup. Uh, this is a vision cage. Of course, I've created um, walls and stuff for it. This would just all be this plastic uh, without the changes that I made. And it really made a nice kind of like it looks like a little bit of a cave inside of here with some uh, plants growing and stuff. So I guess my plan so far is I'm going to pull out all of the substrate and plants and probably put it in a bucket along with any um, isopods that are still in there. I see some little tiny ones. Uh, some of these plants aren't looking too great. They might do better with uh, some fresh substrate and stuff. So I'm just going to transfer everything. I might uh, pluck off a couple of the parts that don't look as good. But I'm going to transfer all this. I might even add a few more plants too and see what I can do. There is a crested gecko in here. Uh, he's kind of difficult to find. One problem I had with the vision cage is, and it's a little hard to see because of the, the difference here, but there's, a, there's lips. There's little areas like this all the way across the top. And, uh, and actually down the channels of the sides and stuff. Uh, these are all places where the lizard can go and hide and basically be uh, in a place where you can't see what they're up to at all. Uh, I'm worried that somehow up above here there's a way to get in here behind this wall and maybe that's where they're going because <clears throat> occasionally this lizard will disappear and then I won't be able to find it at all. Like it just goes into here and it's it's gone. I tried to mitigate that. I shoved uh, like packing peanuts and stuff all throughout here and, uh, and up through this channel and stuff up through here to try and keep uh, keep the lizard from running around but it doesn't seem to do much good. So I've got to pull this, I'm going to pull the, the, the plants, the substrate out. Uh, any decorations and stuff that are that are on the ground, there's really not much on the ground here except for maybe this food bowl and stuff. Then I'm going to start uh, uh, the light also 
this light is it's actually an aquarium light it's one it's a fluval sky one that uh that's actually really really nice uh much nicer than you typically see <laughs> in one of these things it sort of provides heat for this aquarium because it's like a big cooler with all the the walls and stuff that i made but it is just kind of uh wedged in its little feeder out and it's kind of wedged into the the top here so i should be able to take that out and use it in the new tank hopefully i'll encounter the gecko out and about as i'm pulling things out i've got a small container that i can put him in uh temporarily a small little terrarium i can put him in temporarily while i sort out what to do with the rest so i didn't attach these walls with silicone or anything like that so there's a chance there's a small chance i'm able to actually pull these out and then use them in the new terrarium over here i, I attached this clean background just to kind of see what it looks like it's not bad it's not bad but it's a little bit i don't know <laughs> it might be a little too basic i want this to look less like a cave and more like a really open uh part of the forest and stuff so that's that's one of the reasons i'm moving away from these thing this thing with the plastic sides and stuff this is a cool kind of like tv style terrarium really good in a stack of things but not exactly what i want uh, in my living room, I was looking for something a little bigger too, a little bit more vertical. So uh, this will be uh, several inches higher, about, about this much higher. It won't be quite as long, but it'll be taller, which is better anyway. Of course, I, I've got this, uh, this misting system. This has been going. It's had kind of mediocre reviews, but boy, it's been doing great. Um, it seems to work really super well. Even now, like I can kind of change time on it and we can see see it going I do use RO water in it to um, to mist everything both the misters are spraying pretty good that one on the left is a little bit weak but yeah that's what I've been uh, using for water in here for like uh, I guess oh gosh it's been a while since I set this up yeah, but that's one last look at the vision cage before I start tearing it apart. It's kind of a shame. It's a really neat project and stuff. And uh, I'll probably hand this over to somebody that does some reptiles so they can continue uh, using this really cool product. But um, I feel like I've graduated from this and I'm ready to uh, try some new challenges with an all glass enclosure. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, uh, this is pothos growing through here. I have a lot of pothos all around the house. Uh, but this one is a, is a real testament to how, uh, how this stuff can grow. It, it's grown up to the top of the screen. And then through the screen, I'm getting as close as I can, it's gone through the screen and it's now growing out through here. So it's a shame to kind of, what had to, stop this one <laughs> but it's a it's a real testament to just how um yeah how aggressive nature can be
after all that, I got an idea for the background. I was going to use it, but I decided to cut it up. It obviously was a different shape, so I had to cut it up into a lot of different pieces. Uh, after that, I went in and with a heat gun and melted it all so it was all nice and clean. Uh, that combination of the hacksaw and the, and the heat gun worked really well. All right, so this is what I used uh, to put on the original color on here. And I believe I mixed these two together and then I kind of dry brushed with this one in. So I've got a little bit left from the original uh, making of that. So I'm going to uh, take the pieces I cut and I'm gonna paint along the sides of them and uh, finish them off so I can put them back in place. All right. Got them all painted up. While I wait for this to dry, I'm gonna make my little Wabikusa mix. Uh, I'm using some aquarium soil. This is actually kind of an expensive one, but you don't have to use anything quite this, uh, quite this expensive, and uh, peat moss. I'm gonna grind those up together. I may even add a little bit of something else uh, to kind of mix up. And I'm going to use this to fill in the gaps that I'm about to leave in the background and have a, a planted medium. So I guess instead of Wabikusa balls or Wabikusa bricks, I'm making like a Wabikusa mortar that uh, I can grow plants in. All right, so we've got our mix all set up. Get this around. <laughs> All right, so I've finished. Uh, that's what this is what I'll be using for my mortar here uh, shortly. I'll just kind of add water to this, maybe mix it up, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Bobby Kusa dust. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush. I've kind of touched up some of the paint and stuff with that darker color, and of course I did it dark all the way around. Uh, I've got the lighter mix now, and I'm going to dry brush some of this up and kind of touch it up a little bit and make it look a little bit lighter. All right, after I was happy with the dry brush and I uh, felt like it was in good enough shape, we moved on. All right, so as you can see, I've got all these little pieces cut out. I've got them set sort of where I want them to be. Uh, I thought about it a little bit a little bit about what I what I really want out of this. So I, I think I've got this placed approximately the way I'd like it to be. Uh, still not sure in a couple of things I considered maybe doing some other something else. Uh, maybe I'll just do this. Okay. I think I've got it now. All right. Let's lay it up. All right, we're gonna get this started with a little GE silicone one. This is aquarium safe silicone. Just fine for getting these things to stay on here the way I want them to. And silicone is just, just continues to come out after. Alright, so I don't want, I want to leave a little bit of space under there for the uh, drainage layer. The rest of this is just going to get stuck right here as close as I can to the side. This next one I do want to leave a little bit of a gap over on this side. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer but kind of match it up a little bit. Being real careful not to touch the silicone anywhere. And we're going to stick this right here. Alright, it doesn't stick right away. You've got a minute or two to, to kind of mess with it. And I think if you were going to use it in an aquarium, you'd have to let it cure for uh, a couple of days. I think it's like 24, 48 hours, probably preferable. But this isn't going underwater, so I'm not sure. I'm just going to go for no smell. When I get to the no smell part of this, I'm going to leave a little bit of a shelf right up here on the top that uh, the lizard can sit on. 
little area to run around in. And this one, yeah, I think this one I'm going to nuzzle in right here. Now we've got a cool custom background with lots of gaps in here to work with that Wabikusa stuff. So I also wanted to incorporate some driftwood into here. Uh, I've got some black silicone now. And this is leftover from my uh, last adventure with this one of these projects. So I am going to silicone these. The way I did it last time was I used like, some great stuff foam, but I don't feel like, uh, and I've got some of that, but I don't feel like breaking it out. I think I'd rather do it this way. So I'm going to silicone. I'm just glad that the silicone is still good. I'm going to silicone this to the background the best I can and hope that it stays. I'm hoping that the combination of being silicone down and then sort of jammed in with the, this other stuff. Maybe that combo will keep this in place. Stick some extra silicone right here. Maybe I can bond these two things together and it'll be that much stronger. And then this one a nice flat surface to attach to, so we'll just get that set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to wedge these into the, into this, well together, and also into the, the stuff that I've got set up over here. And hopefully the combination of the two things kind of keep this together. Oh, uh, the great stuff might have to come out, we'll see. So another thing I want to do is fill this in and then go in with coconut fiber. This is some coconut fiber I had left over from before. Just kind of go in and uh, make this background be anything but glass. So I'm just gonna kind of mash that stuff down. Any of this that gets loose and ends up uh, on the bottom is no big deal. This is all part of a nice terrarium. So for the most part, this should be covered up, but the parts that aren't, have a little bit of decoration inside there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do the same thing kind of over here. Get all this stuff. A little extra silicone for the wood too. Uh, I'm just kind of using the tip of this to mix it up so it's a Nice even coat all the way around. Let's get in, let's get in over here. Now I gotta be careful not to get onto the side too much. Let's fiber it up. I'll start with the stuff I did first. All right, so it's the next day and I'm checking this. This looks pretty sturdy. I'm not gonna go jerking on too hard, but it's definitely strong enough to kind of uh, take some impacts from cleaning up or working around in here. Not move so much. It's gonna be safe for the gecko, certainly, to run around on. So inside of here, I've got, I've got a little place 
inside where uh, the gecko could go and hide. There's kind of, it's kind of like built a little hide right into this. Uh, we'll be attaching some stuff around here to make that even more uh, interesting and also a place where it can get out and kind of run around. There, there'll be all kinds of ledges and places and of course the gecko can just stick right to the wall if it wants. That dry lock and that concrete mixture makes a really interesting texture that's really easy for uh, geckos to stick to too. So, should be an interesting thing, but it's time to finish it out. We gotta get, we gotta get our mortar uh, into these cracks. All right, so I'm gonna take uh, that mixture that I made yesterday. I'm just gonna add some of this in here. In fact, I guess I could do this whole thing, can I? Man, I hope that's enough. I've got a little bit more I could make. <laughs> and then we're just gonna turn it into mud and make mud pies. I've got some dechlorinated water. I don't think it, I don't know if it needs to be dechlorinated per se, but I did dechlorinate it. <clears throat> now, if we were making Wabi Kusa balls, I'd just form this into a ball and let it dry. But that's not what we're doing today. We're doing something else. But that moss that we added into this is kind of kind of once this dries the, those fibers are kind of bind and we'll make this a little bit better than just like uh sticking dirt into the walls <laughs> it'll it'll actually give it a little bit of structure it also will enable all of this to absorb water and hold it which will make it ideal for planting mosses and stuff which is kind of where i'm going with all this all right let's put this in the wall Now what I'm going to do initially is I'm just going to get some, I'm going to get a kind of a small base layer shoved all the way down in there. And then I uh, kind of measure how much of this I have to see if I need to make some more. I'm hoping I'll have just enough to really do this the way I wanted to. And maybe I can go back in and thicken it up in spots. Don't need to worry about it so much all the way at the bottom, but of course the more of this I get to where the the water table is, or the, where the drainage layer is anyway, uh, the more of it will be able to wick its way back up the side here. And like I said, at this point I'm not worried about keeping my glass clean or anything like that. I'm also going to use this to make these corners a little less severe. Uh, these things stick out quite far. <clears throat> and I want to make that transition a little bit smoother so I can make sort of a, a ramp out of this stuff. Yeah. Again, all these coconut fibers and stuff. And, left over on top of everything I'll just kind of mix in with it too. I'll just kind of help. I probably won't have enough to fill it all in and make it flush, but this is going pretty far. I saw a video of a guy that did this and uh, he actually did a whole rain aquarium 
or terrarium, I guess. And he used this to do his walls, and that was my inspiration. Uh, because I saw the mixture that he made was that with the peat and the uh, aquarium soil. It reminded me of the Wabi Kusa balls that I've, that I've made. So I was like, oh, I could use that same technique. But I don't know if I'd trust a whole wall, especially on something this large. If I'd trust a whole wall that way. But I can certainly... Um, make these cracks work that same way. All right. That's all a bucket number one. Let's see what I get with number two. And here we are right here at the top. Just kind of finishing off the background here. Kind of what I'm going for with some of this too is just to make it a little less obvious <laughs> that uh, we got a cut in background. Uh, we'll be what's cool too is we'll be able to grow things. Things can actually root into all this stuff, and I'm thinking for the most part, if it works like the Wabi Kusa balls do, it's just gonna stay. It's very. Um, can be kind of stiff once it gets going, but it'll be able to hold moisture in. It'll keep that humidity in a good spot. Fills all of this in with a different something else, and you can grow. You can grow things right off this. I'm gonna experiment here at the top and do this whole, you know, do a little wall. So if this falls down, if all of this fails and it breaks apart, gets brittle or whatever later on, I'll just put black on the back of this and uh, call it done. All right. We got a little bit of a lip. I might as well just kind of fill this in too, just so it, it looks the same across the top here. A little bit all the way through here. So the original light that was on the vision cage uh, did not fit. It was quite a bit longer. It did, however, fit on my uh, anoxic tank upstairs, the 20 gallon long. So I put it up there and I took the light that was on the 20 gallon and I put it up here. This is a Kessel. This is one of the older, older model of the Kessels that's uh, made for freshwater tanks. And I've got it mounted because the, the, these really cool mounts right here are uh, a rather difficult. Uh, well, there's no real way to attach it to a terrarium. They're not made for terrariums at all. So I've got like a terrarium stand going and I've hooked it up the alternative way, which I actually don't see people doing a lot, but this, it, every Kessel comes with these little, uh, these little D hooks that you can attach in here. And I've just taken a key ring and I've put it, put it on there. This is not, um, definitely not the preferred met method for mounting one of these expensive lights and the light might not be appropriate, although it does generate a nice amount of heat. Uh, it might not be appropriate for uh, putting above this, but I'm going to try it out and see and what's cool is So with that I can program so all of these, uh, you know, they're going to come on and go off all at the same time And it'll be I don't know it'll be a good synergy for the room. I like that. I like things that sync up like that Here's how it looks standing up a lot of shadows from that Kessel light uh, A single source of light. I don't know if I'm going to like that or not, but that's what we're going to start with I've got a bunch of false bottom left over from the other one, but uh, I had this bag that I never used for my original projects, and I think I'm gonna fill in with a little bit of fresh right here. Ideally, you'd rinse this off and stuff, or soak it, that's what I did last time. I'm 
not too worried about it though. I'm just gonna put it like this. I want to use all of it. huge drainage layer here at the bottom but I'm going to add a little bit more so the bottom of my last terrarium really got integrated and there's a lot of dirt in here which probably isn't uh, ideal for putting in into the bottom but there's also a bunch of isopods and everything else so I'm not sure it'd be really nice if I could transfer some of this uh, organic matter into the the new terrarium and also any of the little critters and stuff that are in there but boy there's a lot of dirt in here I should probably sift it out there's also a lot of isopods boy oh yeah just moving it around I'm seeing them everywhere I think I'm just gonna dump this in here. I'm not worried that there's some dirt in there too charcoal, there's isopods galore. There's big chunks of wood. I'm gonna pull some of these big chunks of wood out at least. They're all roots and stuff that were caught up in the, the last thing. Uh, this is, uh, these are chunks of Oh, what do you call it? A uh, cuddle bone that I leave in here for the isopods to chew on. These little pieces of wood will be good food for them later on. Uh, it's hard to see. Maybe it can come in with my phone. If I had it. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, there's, there's one of the powder orange isopods. Actually, there's another one. Uh, there, this thing, I... I haven't really um, done much with this terrarium, but there are still tons and tons of isopods in here. Like just kind of moving this around, uh, you'll see stuff running around all over the place. Yeah, there's another little critter. Yeah, so those powder orange isopods are pretty pretty easy to keep. Uh, I haven't really been adding even any extra food for them or doing anything specific to keep them up. Uh, of course, they've had a nice wet environment with that monsoon. Uh, it's been doing really good still, so... Um, I'll be installing it on this one also. some of these chunks. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate to have all this dirt in there. I could probably sift that out. It's hmm. a clever way to do that. I don't know. What I found is the roots all go the roots all go down and end up in in this layer. Anyway, They pierce right through the cloth I'm about to put down to kind of keep this from being completely full of dirt. All right. So next step is I'm going to cut some of this mesh. We're going to put it in here. Yeah, after a minute or two, 
after I kind of disturbed the soil and kind of let everything let everything be for a second, man, they're just coming out of the woodwork. There are so many uh, isopods in here. I'm very grateful. I'm not sure if I have springtails though. Um, they're a little bit harder to see than the isopods are. So I haven't seen anything like that. So I might need to go get some springtails or order some. Uh, I'm not sure I have any right now. I might have some of my moss propagation bin. I might just pour that into here, any of the water that's left in that and start it over again. All right, with some trial and error, I've cut this, um, cut this thing up to sort of loosely fit on here. I'm just gonna go right up to the edge here on the on the sides that you see real well, like this side of the terrarium in the front. And then I'll be a little looser with it on this side. Let it go up a little bit. All right. That's covered for the most part, and what this will do is it's gonna catch some dirt. A little bit of a hole in the back. I'm just going to fill in with a, with a cutting. Let's do this whole side. Yeah. There's some pretty big root balls on most of the other plants and stuff, so uh, they're going to bring a lot of substrate with them. But I've got a whole lot of this uh, rupty soil. And I'm going to throw that in. I also have a recipe uh, where I make my make my own. It's basically Serpa, Serpa Designs recipe that I like to emulate. But I had this sitting on the shelf. I thought maybe it's a good time to use it. Seems like a lot. Let's see here. Let's rip this out. We've got a lot of room to plant in here, which is nice. All right. So like I said, these things have a lot of um, uh, these plants have a lot of the soil on them still, so so I don't want to put too much more. I've got a little bit more in the bag. I'm going to use that to fill in some gaps here in a second. All right, so let's get down to the fun part and start putting these plants in here. These plants are quite mature because they've been growing in this my other terrarium for a while now. Because of that, all their roots are interconnected, and I'm having to kind of pull them out in a weird way here. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at the look at the roots on that Z. This is a ZZ plant. Let's go ahead and separate you two. We've got a palm here. This big old ZZ plant. I uh, have to root that up a little bit. You also have these really pretty nerve plants, which we'll probably put out in front and stay kind of low. We've got some some more wood that I didn't use. I could actually have this coming up, up from the bottom, and still use it. Just kind of intermix it in here. So I might just do that right there. 
All right, so, man, I'm not sure about this thing. I might, might have to just kind of trim this up a little bit. I'm not sure if this is a mistake. I'm gonna take these bigger ones. Go ahead and trim this off. I've grown a lot of aquarium plants, but I really haven't done much with uh, a lot of terrestrial plants, so I'm not sure what the appropriate thing to do here, but it didn't come to me with all these roots, so I'm assuming that uh, maybe if I just leave a couple going, then it will adapt. All right, and that is right at the bottom of that, so that's really not a lot of dirt, but let's kind of get it going right here. There's a couple of these, so I'm going to try to strategically place them. All right. Get these, get these covered up best I can. Mm, definitely going to need more dirt. All right. I'm not taking any roots off of this. It's got a nice little tight little root structure. I'm going to park him right in the corner, right here. I've still got most of the dirt from the uh, other aquarium as well, or terrarium as well. So what I might be able to do... is use that. Now, do I want to park this in here? I don't want to crowd it too much. Could just make a palm corner though, right here. Yeah, I might do that. I'll just put them in together. Here's another giant root ball of plants. All right, what do we have here? We've got, let's just knock the dirt off of this thing, first of all. This is all substrate from the last terrarium, probably isopods and everything else too. Uh, anything that doesn't look too healthy, we'll just kind of get rid of it. Some of this looks a little yellow, but it might be from, from staying in the bucket for a day or so. Uh, I'm not sure how I would even go about removing some of these. So I'm just going to put it in as is. Uh, we've got pothos growing. We'll kind of direct that to the background. It'll find its way on out of here, I'm sure, at some point. All right. Got even more isopods appearing. <laughs> We're just leaving this one's root system pretty much intact. And we were hedging our bets with that. One thing I forgot to do is a charcoal layer. Uh, there was a fair amount of charcoal in that last batch. I, I don't assume that it's still active. Uh, but yeah, I did forget to put charcoal in there. I don't think that's going to be super cr crucial, but um, would have been better if I'd remembered, but I did not. So. There's no going back now. So now we got a lot of roots showing, so let's fill in a little bit with what's left of this substrate. And uh, I still got I still got a ton of dirt left over from the first tank so we're going to use that to fill in the gaps finish this up what's great is I've got isopods <laughs> got a nice uh, lived in substrate charcoal I'm 
moss, dead leaves, everything to make this look really super natural. And fill it in. Got a few of these uh, botanicals and stuff that I like to put in as sort of decoration. And some bits of moss and stuff left over from the last tank. Find that stuff really helps kind of keep the humidity nice. So right here I have a propagation bin I uh, started years ago and I've been uh, experimenting with mosses and stuff like that. I'm thinking I still have a bunch of springtails in here so I might pour some of the water out of this into the, into the new terrarium and see if I can get a little help. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take some of this moss. And I'm going to add it to these background areas back here. Let's go try this in the back corner. I'm going to mush it into that these little channels that I made and just see what happens with it. This stuff is in a mixture, a little clob of mud that's not unlike what I just put on there. <laughs> so it sort of blends in really well. I'm hoping later on I'll find little plants and stuff that are fun to jam into that or other kinds of moss. that will be fun to jam into these those little dark areas. But uh, I'm going to leave it as is for now. Alright, here's hoping there were some springtails in here. And to help encourage those isopods out, go ahead and sort of pre-moisten the, the soil. A little bit of water here and there. And voila, that's the terrarium. A lot of big mature plants in it right from the start. That's kind of fun. That doesn't happen a lot. Uh, Cycled substrate, or I don't know if it's cycled like it is in an aquarium, but it's got it's definitely got some organic uh, stuff going on here. It should be good to get it started. All right, so here are the monsoon nozzles. Uh, uh, this is the way I had them before. They were just kind of jammed into the into the uh, plastic of the background and. And angled. This time I'm gonna, they also came with these suction cups. I'm gonna attach these suction cups to it and uh, go ahead and install them that way for now until I think of something more creative to do with them. All right, this thing I thought was neat, but it fell uh, just moments after installing it. I definitely wouldn't want to just leave it hanging, especially under fragile plants or things that could, you know, get damaged by this thing falling on it. It's kind of a piece of garbage. So I went back to um, went back to this magnetic one. I got this magnetic one on Etsy. It used to sit right in the bottom over here, but uh, I've attached it as intended. It didn't go through the plastic, but it goes through this glass just fine. And uh, it's got a little feeder dish, so I'll put some food in there. It's got a little water dish also uh, just to keep some water in there if you want. And somewhere in here, I'll probably install this thing for now. I do have a fancier one. I've got this uh, digital one with little probes and stuff, but the batteries have run out on this. So I'm gonna, I've ordered some batteries and I'll install this later. 
I haven't taken off the adhesive backing or anything. I don't, I, no commitments on this thing. I'm just going to kind of set it in here and kind of get an idea what the humidity is and the temperature right in the middle of the tank. All right, so it's been a few days since I actually planted this out and uh, just yesterday I've taken my gecko and I've moved him from his temporary home and then into this. And uh, he seems to be doing okay. He's running around and now I can see him wherever he goes. There were a few things that sort of instigated the whole initial change. Uh, the vision cage, while it might be suitable for a lot of creatures, would, the way I customized it out is probably uh, not advisable. Just because it kind of left a lot of areas for the animals to hide, especially small animals and stuff. So with the vision cage, uh, right where the substrate guard is, that clear piece of plastic that keeps the substrate from going off into the channels that the glass moves down, uh, in between that and the edge of the tank, there was a small gap. And I believe my uh, initial lizard, the first lizard I got, uh, Freckle, I believe he crawled down into this gap and either got stuck or just went and hid until it eventually passed away because he just kind of disappeared from inside the terrarium. Some year, like a year and a half or maybe two years later, uh, one of the people from the club came over and said, or was talking to me and said that they, uh, they had a crested gecko that they had rescued from someone and that didn't want it anymore. And, uh, they, they also would like to, uh, pass it on to somebody that was, uh, really excited to keep one. And I really, uh, I really missed having the, the leopard or my crested gecko and I decided to take it on. Well, so I still had the vision cage going. And it had, uh, you know, it had all the plants and the isopods and all that was still running. So I decided to take the, the Cresty and I put him in there. And he ran around for a few days and then it disappeared. Now, Freckle, the original uh, gecko that I had, I, I saw him quite a lot. So I would see him running around all over the place. And then eventually he just kind of disappeared and never came back. But this one, it seemed like within, within just a few days, within a week, uh, I wasn't seeing them at all. And I was taking the light and, and, and looking around with my phone all around, uh, all in all the areas in that tank and I couldn't find them at all. So I was getting worried that I, the same thing would happen. They just kind of disappear into some corner I couldn't find in there. And then I'd just, you know, not see them again. Uh, then late one night, it had been a couple of weeks actually since this, I, I hadn't seen them. And I, I didn't, I saw no signs of them at all. No excrement and nothing. I kept putting food in there, but no food seemed to be eaten. Then weeks go by and I'm up late painting one night and I hear it moving around. And I kind of look over in the cage and, and there it was. So it was still alive. I was excited that it was still alive and stuff in there. So um, I put some food in there and uh, and this time it was it did seem to be eating some food and stuff. So I decided to uh, to, to go ahead and just take that thing apart. And, uh, and do another terrarium out of it. So uh, this terrarium, there's nowhere for it to hide. I have made hides for it, a place for it to go and get away from the light and stuff like that. And, and that's all built into the background with a with the the wood. It's sort of made like a I made sort of a like a wood cage right in the middle. So there's lots of ways in and out, but it it should feel pretty secure in there. And and it's a good enough size to where. Uh, even if he grows up a bit, he'll be able to fit inside of that. In fact, he's in it right now. I liked the vision cage a lot, like, or I liked my implementation of that vision cage a lot. It was kind of like a television because you couldn't see anything except right through the front. But I definitely like uh, the all glass better. I think it goes better in the living room too. It looks, it's a nice addition to all the, the planted tanks and stuff and the other terrarium, the the uh, bio bi orb air over there it, it looks they, it's it's a nice little bookend uh on this big tank here it's definitely interesting to have more angles to look at it uh as far as the the quality of this particular terrarium i, I haven't had it long enough to really make a big judgment it seems like the door the door is a little loose and stuff and uh the but the construction of it doesn't seem too bad uh, the, all the, the seam lines 
seemed okay. There hasn't been any leaks or anything like that out of the bottom portion, uh, even though I put quite a bit of water initially in it to get it going. I actually have a cord coming in the mail, so I'm going to attach the little audio cords that sync all those together. And so all these lights will be synced together. They'll turn on and off on their own, so there won't be any timers or, st or anything. It's all based on the Kessel controllers. Uh, the, the light that's coming out of this is a little bit, uh, it, well, it's very monodirectional. You know, it's like kind of a spotlight on top of there. And I, I, I would like something a little bit more diffused. So I don't know if I'll keep this light or not, but in the short term, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to use to get this started. I've also got a little heat dish up there. Uh, I'm, I'm right now I'm measuring the temperature and the ambient temperatures, uh, about 76 or so, uh, right where the thermometer is, which is right in the middle of the tank, which means it's probably a little bit hotter as it gets closer to the light bulb. So I think that there's probably a good thermal gradient in there. That'll be uh, a pleasant environment for the Cresty. I've got an automatic mister that's been going. Uh, I installed this mister. I guess uh, I, I'm sure I talked about it on the channel when I when I set up the other tank or the other Bavarian. It didn't get great reviews on Amazon or anything, but it seems to be really doing well. And it's been a great addition to this, so I don't have to mist it or go in there and mess with that at all. That's all automated. Uh, I've got a little RO machine. Uh, which I did a video about also, the Aqua Bear or something like that. I can't remember what that thing's called. Anyway, but it's still going. Uh, I take my R RO water, I put it in there. Doesn't leave any spots or anything. It's, it's really good. It's really cool. I've got a little bit of work to do on this still. I'm a little curious about how my little Wabi Kusa uh, filling does inside the background there and uh, whether or not it's going to flake and fall out or if it'll stay nice and moist like, I, like I'd like it to. Uh, I've got one of the hoses kind of pointed almost towards it, not quite towards it, so maybe it'll get a little bit of a, a misting now and then. And I'd like to get some maybe nice moss or something like that to add on there. Uh, for those reasons, I, I didn't really have a lot on hand. I had a little bit out of a propagation bin, but not nothing that looked really nice, so I didn't go crazy with it uh, all over the background. I'll, I'll leave that and, and kind of see how this stuff does and see if I want to add something else to it. I transferred a few plants from the bio orb over to this tank. Uh, so in the past, when I would put them in the vision cage, they didn't do very well, or they take a little bit of time to acclimate. So I'm kind of curious to see if there's any difference with this. I have no reason to believe that it'll be any different now, but uh, <laughs> these might be a little bit more similar than the uh, than the last two were. It's a, for one, it's a lot cooler in here probably than the vision cage was because basically I'd, the way I did the walls and I made that little cave in there kind of made it cooler out of the whole thing. So uh, it's very, it was very efficient in keeping the heat locked in. The last thing I had to add to this is uh, some springtails. I've ordered some off eBay. Uh, I think I've probably had some of my propagation bin when I poured them in, but I've got a fresh batch of springtails I'm going to put in there, another batch to put away so I can start so I have more and more of them to add to other things later. And folks, aside from that, I believe I'm done with this project. I'm just gonna sit back and watch it grow. If you'd like to come and watch it grow with me, be sure to subscribe so you can find my videos again. And until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean terrarium, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.